And tonight, the house that Kobe built will feel a little bit hollow. She a little paper ball. Uh -huh. Kobe! <laughs> yeah. They gave up 17 points Ooh. in the first half to a walking statue quarterback <laughs> in Joe Flacco. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> if I can be like Mike, Michael Jordan's story still resonates. Why is it such a big deal that they actually care about both teams in this town now. Nobody's ever going to overtake the Lakers in L.A. The Clippers can't do anything to overtake them ever? They cannot do anything to ever overtake the Lakers. This is the original Spectrum Sportsnet Dodgers schedule for this season, but you can throw that out of the window because the season started almost two weeks after the All-Star game was supposed to be here. You know what it means to fall into a division hole like this. How do you climb out of it? Uh, we're not executing as well as we can. So how do you fix it? Turn this field right here from soccer to football all while you were sleeping. Cody Bellinger and Clayton Kershaw. Now you're adding American League MVP to the team and Mookie Betts. There's no competition in the NL West. It's getting to the World Series. How big of a loss is Ryan Barrett for you guys? I saw you just talking to him just a second ago. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Last year. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, hey, dude, look at them. Look at them. The Lakers have lost three straight games, and the Clippers have lost three of their last five. So this night is about making a statement. But there's still a debate about if players should be coming back at all in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement. Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, they shut down that vaunted uh, Packers offense. I love it when you talk football, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Your Rams got off to a big start this season. What do you guys say about it? We beat the spread um, probably by a new that, That's what's most important is the covering the spread, brother. Sunday afternoon during lunch with a friend, Cappy Pondexter first heard the tragic news of Kobe Bryant's death. Kobe was one of those people that I thought would have a very long, fulfilling life. I thought I would see him in the Hall of Fame, being honored. I actually thought we would be in the same group. In many ways, she was just like Kobe, just in the WNBA. She's a two-time champion, an Olympic gold medalist, one of the top 20 players of all time, and patterned her game just like Kobe. And from the time they met at the Beijing Olympics, he was a fan of hers and the women's game. He thought we actually played the game the right way, fundamentally. You know, our skill set was a lot different because guys played above the rim, women played below the rim, and he just thought that our game was way more graceful. After Kobe's retirement, it was the love Gianna had for the game which made Kobe give back to the game. But this time, it was to the next generation of girls. The number one thing was his daughter, Gigi. I think the love that she had for the game inspired him to, to actually teach her. Cappy and Kobe were both on a special WNBA panel in March at his academy, promoting the game for young women. It's a bigger investment in the women's game because there's women out there that are doing phenomenal things, not just in basketball, in sports in general, that tend to get swept under the rug. And in her last text message to the iconic star, she asked him to help with a charity event. But Kobe was unavailable because he had just become a dad for the fourth time. It was that same love for his children which had Cappy looking forward to working with Gianna on her game. He wanted me to teach his daughter, and that was a part of the plan. The next move was me coming down there and really teaching his daughter how to handle the basketball. But now those lessons won't be needed because their game may now be perfect from above. While Cappy will always cherish the moments she had with one of the greatest players to ever live. Anthony Davis. We can exhale because we finally got basketball back last night. The Clippers, the Lakers, they got it on in Orlando in the safe NBA bubble. It's like walking onto a college campus, except inside, Cal Goon is in the middle of a basketball wonderland. This is what the venue looks like. Inside of the NBA bubble at Disney World in Orlando. It's kind of like going into space and, and seeing that for the first time. Kyle is covering the Lakers and Clippers in the bubble for the OC Register. He's been reporting for 10 years, but has never experienced anything like this. Okay, this is where we get our corona tests every morning. And I could not leave my doorway. Before doing anything in the bubble, he had to be quarantined in his hotel room for a week. And the only time my door really ever opened in the day was to get food 
or to get tested. Those strict protocols show why the NBA has been the most successful league in avoiding any COVID-19 outbreaks. If you don't get tested, you can't work the next day. They took all precautionary reasons, measures, um, to make sure that we, as a, as a league, as as safe as we can be. Even though coronavirus safety measures are pretty tight on campus, there are some perks. Mac and cheese today. Like food provided at no extra cost. One thing we do get included is laundry service. Waiters goes to oh, the spin by Bubble Cheese. Last night's opener gave fans that old feeling back. But for Kyle, the media seats are right by the court. There's no getting used to basketball without fans. It's like watching your favorite movie with no soundtrack. Even though Kyle is at Disney World, there's no time for fun, just work. But it's all a part of life in the bubble.